Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, yo. Doing this, uh, we do live streams every day, don't you know? Or five days a week, anyways. And in doing so, we're going to do what we're just, we do what we I am about to talk about right now. And that is players that could be traded from every team. I do a live stream. Participants come on and you can be part of that by hitting the subscribe button and we converse and come up with players that could be traded or like if you look at my previous videos, we grade managers, coaches for all the forwards from each team, stuff like that. Lots of frolic. Go check it out. Hit the sub button and get part of it, my friends. It's good times. So we're going to get into... Players that could be traded from every team. This is players that we think should be, players that could be, all of those sort of things like that. We This is part two. We started the first one uh, from Anaheim to Montreal. Now we're going to be looking at the Nashville Predators, which is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, www.steelflyers.com. If you like all four major sports and all the teams within or maybe you don't like them all but you like talking about all of them and have favorites of any of those you'll like it go check it out it's the best in the land okay let's go uh starting off with nashville um what direction are they going here we figured what we would do uh in the live stream that we did was, I mean, yeah, trade Matt to Shane if you can find somebody. Have a good year, possibly, but unlikely that anybody's going to want to take that contract at the moment. But that was the first name to come up. And I'm sure it would be the first name that would come up for Mr. Poyle, too, if he could find a suitor. Uh, Johansson as well. I think there's more chance of Johansson. It's, it's a little shorter term. Um, he isn't a bad center. He probably would be better in a third line role. Hence the reason why $8 million a year is pretty steep. Might be something where they have to retain and nobody likes to do that when you still got four years left. Uh, sometimes like you saw with, uh, Philadelphia, they traded Voracek for Atkinson and it kind of worked out for both teams. Uh, little two, two players that were having a difficult time where they were. Maybe a change of scenery. That type of deal could happen there. Um, then Granlin as well, who just keeps on getting contracts. Finally, he gets a long-term contract uh, for four years with uh, no no-trade clause. That's the one thing here. I do believe none of these contracts have no-trade clauses on them. So it gives them an opportunity. Now, why would you trade Granlin? Well, if they don't do well this year, they really got to look. I think Nashville's really got to look at just totally rebuilding this team. Uh, in which case, Philip Forsberg's name will be out there. He's a UFA. Um, but I have a feeling they're just going to keep on going with this group and trying to add from it. That's my gut feeling. I don't know if I would do that myself. Uh, yeah, Forsberg and Granlin. I would say really just trade. All of those players, maybe keep Philip Forsberg because, you know, four or five years from now when the rebuild's done, do totally done, Forsberg still will have some legs, but uh, tough to say. He has not, He doesn't have a no trade clause. You could probably get a good, pretty good return, even though he'd be sort of a rental if you can find somebody to give him a contract. Tough call. Very hard to say this for Nashville fans, but... I really think of rebuild would be the would be the best option for uh, Nashville at this time, which means we don't we're not signing at home. Also, that would be in the, that he they would be, he would be traded. Grab some draft picks. Juicy Soros is still young enough that you could pick a lot of picks up, build this team again three four years down the road and see what you got. All right. As it stands right now in Nashville, they're a maybe make the playoffs and out. And that's the last thing you want to be. New Jersey Devils. Um, we have Johansson, uh, which is an obvious one. 
He's uh, got a couple years. He kind of he's a journeyman, anyways. Goes around all around the league, pretty much third, fourth line. He can fit wherever you want, like a utility guy. Uh, I I could see if they're out of it, them trading Johansson for how many times has he done it before? Third, fourth round pick for Johansson. Uh, Severson is a possibility. Uh, now that they've built up their defense with Adam Graves. Uh, Joe, uh, Jorgen, uh, Jonas Siegenthaler they got from Washington. Ty Smith is obviously going to take a lot of minutes. And, of course, getting Dougie Hamilton. Now, Severson is getting $4 million a year to play five, six minutes, which isn't terrible. And he has been a good soldier the whole time through here. But if they're out of it and they want to grab some draft picks, he wouldn't be a bad option. Uh, personally, I don't think think New Jersey's going to be right out of it here because I love their goaltending with McKenzie and Bernier. I have a feeling they're going to hold on to these guys and just keep on building through the draft. Uh, and then, of course, P.K. Subban. That is one where at $9 million, if they're out of the playoffs and they don't think they can make it, they could actually retain half of that. As long as he has a decent season, somebody would probably give you a pick for half for four point five million for Subban to get to go into the playoffs with for the power play or what have you. So next, New York Islanders, and uh, we have jo uh, Josh Bailey, and that was mostly because he was given you know to Seattle for free, so. Uh, he is the assistant captain there. Um, I think they pretty much knew Bailey wasn't going to pick, that Everly was going to be the one selected there. Um, hard to trade a guy like that, even though he has had diminishing returns for the last little while, just because he's been such a good soldier. But there are things that if you want to get a, a really top-line right winger, Bailey's name, if you were willing to give him away for free, probably could be used to bring back something of that nature. Uh, somebody, a few people said Pulak because they have to resign him. I don't see that. I think they're resigning Ryan Pulak all day long. I can't, I can't see him letting him go, letting Pulak go to free agency, especially after giving Adam Pellic five point seven. That's going to really lock him, unless he just doesn't like the number the Islanders are offering, and then they got to trade him away. That's a possibility. He does have quite a bit of leverage here. He's going to be a UFA. He's only 26. Uh, he could probably get a big number out there. You want to stay? You're going to take a take less to stay on the island. That's the question. Uh, Cal Clutterbuck. You know, it doesn't seem like they'll ever let Clutterbuck go. Uh, I, I, I understand he's a UFA. He'll probably just be keep on signing one-year contracts or two-year contracts with the Islanders. If he loves it there, um, I imagine he'll stay there. Uh, but I get it. I get why the, uh, the people were to say that. My pick for this, and I wouldn't know if it's this year. It would probably be in the offseason. If Sorokin crushes it this year, they could move Varlamov to somebody who really needs a goaltender to make some cap space again to add to some other areas like scoring. Uh, and defense is getting to the point now that they have to sign Pollock. They have to sign uh, Andy Green, who's going to retire soon. Uh, and they don't have a lot of guys knocking on the door to play right now. I could see them using Varlamov to get another defenseman or maybe more scoring or what have you, so if Sorokin really crushes it. Uh, he does have a bit of a no-trade clause, though, so that could make it a little bit difficult. New York Rangers. Um, Ryan Strom has been on the block forever. They keep on talking about Ryan Strom. Um, he's going to be a free agent. He's probably going to get a, a little bit of a raise on that 4.5. He's been putting up some pretty decent numbers in New York. Um, 
And I think that they want to give that money to Heidel. Like they'll be looking at Heidel as more of their second line center of their future. Not to mention you have Zabanajad they have to sign. I mean, there's a lot of players coming up for the Rangers to, to sign. And Adam Fox just may not have the money to throw a raise to a 28-year-old Ryan Strom. So I could see him being used in a deal uh, to maybe they just let him go. If they're really in it, unless they can get a young player in return, they can still play. Ryan Strom just might have to leave on, in free agency if they if they think that they're going to make it. Uh, Rangers, uh, also Georgiev. Georgiev, I pretty, probably has kind of into, said to them, you know what, uh, it's pretty obvious that Shosturkin is your guy here. Uh, this is a little awkward. You know, I would really like to try my hand at a number one somewhere. And I could definitely see them letting him do that, uh, probably in the offseason uh, as a restricted free agent. Uh, maybe even give him a qualifying offer and then see who's out there. I'm sure Gorgiev at three some million, there'd be a team out there that would be looking at a young goaltender of his skill set to be able to help him out. So, uh, and then the other one is Zabanajad. Now, Zabanajad is a free agent, and the big thing was that there was talk that Zabanajad was part of a trade for Eichel. Uh, I get it. He's going to be a UFA, but I, I think they're going to sign him. I really do. Uh, somewhere in the not ten, 9 to $10 million mark range for a lot of years. Um, how many years? I'm not sure. It would depend. Maybe 10 years for six, $10 million for six years. Not, you know, it goes down any higher than that. Guys put up a 40-goal season. He puts up huge numbers. If he has a big year this year, they're going to have to pay him. They're going to have to pay him or trade him. And what are you going to get back now if uh, he's going to be a free agent next year? Basically a rental. They're almost forced to sign him. Uh, Ottawa Senators. Uh, basically with the Ottawa Senators, it'll be more of the same. If, they're, uh, if they are out of a playoff race, they'll trade away play like Holden that they just picked up from Vegas. Um, Tierney, Brown, on defense, Joshua Brown, guys like that to pick up a couple more draft picks and just keep on building this team, building this team. Now, there has been, it wasn't mentioned, but Colin White's been all over the trade rumor block. And for Eichel, I saw a package that included White, but it wasn't strong enough. I don't think it was uh, White. Um, first round draft pick next year. Uh, Brandstrom and I think a goaltender. Something like that. It didn't sound strong enough of a package, but you get the idea. Colin White could be included in a package to try to get themselves a second line center. Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't doubt it if we saw that with the Senators. Now the problem here is Colin White really hasn't panned out as much as they wanted to when they gave him a 4.7. But he's a good enough player that I think you could make a case he could fill in a third line spot for most teams, uh, for a lot of teams. And at 4.7, that's not horrible, horrible. So might be able to find a spot for him. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers. We, Kubel which I don't like, but they have Allison coming up. He could lose a spot there. They could get a draft pick for him if Allison really uh, pushes for a roster spot, which I imagine he will. Um, let's check out the depth chart here. Where do they have? Yeah, Wade Allison. They have him on the fourth line right now. Um, I think he could easily take Kubel's spot. They could pick up a pick for him or and then maybe sign a lesser player or you know give a spot to Morgan Frost he's on the edge of uh, not staying in Philadelphia I would say it's one of the biggest uh, ones that we had picked out for the Flyers possibly connect me if he um, if uh, Atkinson really crushes it and again making room for guys like Morgan Morgan Frost and 
Uh, Joel Farabee, Farabee can play the right side. If Oscar Lindblom has a really good season, they could use a guy like Travis Connecting to fill a hole that they may figure that they have on defense still or something of that nature. Ultimately, I think they want Travis to get back to where he was before. Didn't have a great year last year, but, I mean, he's a Gallagher-type guy, and he's huge to have on your roster. So uh, I'm sure they are hoping that they don't have to trade him. Claude Giroux, of course, is there. I, I think they just can't get rid of Giroux in Philadelphia. He's just been part of the fabric for so long. I suppose if he tries to price himself out, especially after Couturier signed that sweet little $7.75 million deal, what is Giroux going to get now? You know, is he going to drop down to six? With his numbers, he could easily make close to what he's at right now, at least seven, seven and a half. But uh, we'll see what happens with that. I really think that they'll re-sign him. It's out there, though. If they fall flat on their butt again, then I could see it. If Philadelphia just doesn't rebound from last year, you could see a whole lot of these things happening. And then James Van Riemsdyk. Now, he's almost retainable now. Uh, that, again, they could retain. But my inkling is that the Philadelphia Flyers will be in there and they're just going to keep them for one more year. But it is possible. Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, could be all kinds of things happening in Pittsburgh, right? You've got, uh, I mean, if Jari blows it, yeah, sure, Jari's out there, but who's going to take him? That's the thing with Jari. If he doesn't do well, I don't see anybody touching that contract. They're in big trouble. But it's only two years at three and a half. So I don't think anybody will take it, though, if he doesn't do well again. Because at the playoffs last year, he didn't just do well. He was a dumpster fire. So he's got to play a lot better than he was be than, than he was last year. Um, we have Rust, Latang, and Zucker as possibilities. And that's just simply Rust is a free agent. If this team is looking to, you know, to rebuild like most people think they should, Brian Russ might not be a guy you want to give a big contract to right now. Um, I get the feeling, though, that Crosby loves him and they're going to try to re-sign him. But I, I honestly don't know with Pittsburgh. With Hextall there, there, it seems to be a clash of philosophies. You've got Hextall, who's all about rebuilding a team building through the draft, and then you have, I've heard words from Mario Lemieux and ownership there where they want to just keep these guys and build around them, and I think that's foolish. If you're going to do it, do it. Um, so, yeah, and then Latang, Chris Latang. You're going to re-sign Chris Latang? His defensive responsibilities have been getting, he's good offensively, but he hasn't, he's been getting less and less in the defensive zone the older he gets. Uh, Seems like a viable trade option to me. Again, this would basically be if they decide, okay, they're finally going to rebuild. They're finally going to do it. These are the guys you're going to go. Otherwise, they'll just re-sign them and keep on getting older together. That's what I see there. Okay. San Jose Sharks. Um, Benino and Hurdle. I, I think Benino was signed for the purpose of picking up a draft pick for him in a lot of ways. If they're completely out of it, he got the two-year deal. Uh, he does have a moderate no-trade clause. Um, how many? How many was that? Includes oh five team no-trade list. That that's minor. Uh, just basically, he's going to pick the five teams that are not in the playoffs so he can go for another run, like don't have a chance. They wouldn't be trading him to a non-playoff team anyway. So, um, But I think he was pretty much picked for a pick. Now, if they're still in it, they can keep him and they can go for it for the playoffs. But uh, So it gives them kind of options. And for Benino, it made sense because he gets at 33, he gets a guaranteed two-year contract, which is hard to get as a 33-year-old in this uh, cap situation that the NHL is in. Um, you would love to trade a lot of guys, right? Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, Vlasic, just their contracts won't allow it. They've got themselves in a very big 
pickle, and I know all of the San Jose fans right now listening are going, yep, they sure do have that. Uh, <laughs> uh, do we have anybody else? Oh, Hurdle. Yes, Hurdle's a free agent next year. I only see that happening if Hurdle wants to go. If Hurdle's like, I'm not signing here, I want to go, then it's possible you could see Hurdle go at the deadline and pick up some picks and just keep on rebuilding. I think it might be the best thing to do. Just trade Timo Meyer, all these guys with value, and let these old guys finally make up their mind. Like, okay, I guess we're rebuilding and I don't want to be here. So what are we going to do about it? That's maybe all you got there in San Jose. Tell me what you think, San Jose fans. Seattle, um, whole lot. We have Giordano, Yarncroft, Renberg, Donskoy, Eberle, Dunn. All of them could be traded for picks. Um, I mentioned this in before when I did my we did our uh, general manager gradings that I thought that Francis possibly picked up a lot of these guys for value at the deadline. Uh, Jordan Eberle, uh, for sure. Um, Jane and Swartz, I think they they brought in to be a leader. This guy's thought, you're not going to find a harder worker than Jaden Schwartz. Pro, his injury issues kind of worry me, but um, he has a he he just has that desire that you want all your young players to have. Um, Alexander Wenberg, they they have moderate no trade clauses, but they're not hard to get around. Donskoy doesn't even have a no trade clause. I'm almost positive. <laughs> especially if he has a really good year up to the deadline, they'll use him for picks. That's what I think is going to happen. There's a lot of guys here that could be traded at the deadline. Uh, bring back some, some, you know, players to finish the rest of the year with. And then next year, sign some more free agents that you want may want to build help build character in your young players. We'll see if I'm right or wrong there. We all kind of had that same sort of idea with Seattle. Next, St. Louis Blues, and there was a lot here too. Um, if the St. Louis Blues are not in a play in the playoff race, or uh, and I think that's possible, very difficult uh, division that they're in: uh, Minnesota, Chicago, um, Colorado, like Winnipeg. Tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be probably. Very tight, and with their defense, I think they're going to be in tough. And if it's getting to that point where if they're really going to be out of it next year, they may start to trade these pieces away. Now you say, well, they just got Buknevich and they just got Brandon Saad. Um, what's Brandon Saad's no trade clause that they gave him? 12 team no trade list in 25 26 otherwise no trade so they have protected him from an, from trading him Biknevich on the other hand doesn't have that so if this goes south in a hurry obviously they they, they want Brandon Saad to stick around for a while a four and a half million I get it even as a rebuilding team Brandon Saad has cups to be able to help young players and uh, to you know he to be like a symbol for the organization where Pavel Bignevich, I could see him being signed for the purpose of trading him down the road. Uh, again, this is all based on St. Louis being out of it. Like this, just things don't work out for them. Then you got Colton Pareko. What do you do with this guy? 28 years old injury issues. Um, if things don't work out and this defense can't keep it together, uh, they don't get the offense that they thought they were going to get from guys like Biknevich, Saad, Jordan Cairo. Like, it's a lineup that doesn't scream going to win a cup. I think that's what I'm trying to say here. Tell me what you think, St. Louis Blues fans. Does this lineup scream going to get a cup for you? Vladimir Tarasenko still has to be traded. And uh, what do you got left? What do you got left on this, this team? We love O'Reilly. But Brandon saw Buknevich will move up to the front top right. Now, you're going to see Buknevich's numbers are great. But his overall compete level, I never really found to be that great. Pretty soft. 
Um, I don't think he's an ideal number top line right winger, to tell you the honest truth. Um, they need big movement from Robert Thomas, Jordan Cairo, to really give them confidence that they can keep on moving on with this crew. I think they're on the fence of whether they're going to move on with this group or not. Now, they do have some young players in Clem Costin, uh, Co- uh, Coastin, I think is how you say it, actually. But nothing really knocking on the door that's going to blow your mind. Tell me if I if that's uh, so. The cupboard's getting a little bare. I think there could be some big trades there in St. Louis, uh, Tampa Bay. We have Kalorn, um, but he's got two years left. I also think that they could trade Palat. However, I think they're just going to run with this group and worry about the rest later. If Palat gets picked up by three on free agency because they can't afford him. So be it. That's really what I think is going to happen. They're running with this group, trying to get their third, adding at the deadline if, uh, with uh, they know where they'll have more cap space because it's halfway through the year, um, and just try to win the third. I don't think you'll see too many trades unless you get, like, maybe Elliott doesn't pan out or you get some injuries on the defense or something like that. But for the most part, I think they're throwing caution to the wind and going with this crew right to the end. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, oh, it's all about whether they're going to get some depth in Toronto. Uh, you've got uh, Ilya Mikhaev could be, I when I say this, I think it's possible that Toronto is barely in the playoffs this year. I think they'll probably be in it, though, in which case they'll keep the guys that they have here and just roll with it after the season is over. The big question is Morgan Riley. Are they going to be able to have enough money to sign him? To me, that's the big one. How do you, what do you do with them? You're going to have to sign them and they don't have any money to sign them. Very difficult. And they need defensemen. So you just go, let him go as a free agent and then try to sign somebody else? For what? For the same money you're going to sign Morgan Riley? Get a better defenseman at Morgan Riley's Price point? Maybe. Very difficult spot. Um, anyways, if goaltending goes south, and I think that's possible with Mrazek and Jack Campbell, if one of them gets injured, as Mrazek often does, and uh, they can't keep it afloat, then I could see Morgan Riley getting traded. Uh, in which case, what do you do now? I, it, this, I am at a loss as to what Toronto is going to do in the future here with uh, the cap space that they have. Um, if they're right out of it, you could see, you know, Bunting, Engvall. I mean, a lot of guys getting traded away for picks and then try to sign free agents and do it all over again. Uh, Golden Knights, Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, sorry, Vancouver Canucks first. So much talk about Besser, Brock Besser. He could demand a lot of money. Uh, he's only got two years left. Is before he's an unrestricted free agent, is he willing to sign a long-term deal? There is going to be a battle over this this uh, contract here. I believe he's from the United States, and you know maybe he wants to go back that direction. Yeah, he's from Minnesota. Um, he's got all the power here, and Vancouver is not great in cap space for next year, so. Projected cap space, well, $27 million, but you've got – where's Hughes? Oh, Quinn Hughes to sign, Elias Peterson to sign this year. Then a whole bunch of people coming off the books next year, but you got to replace them and Brock Besser to sign. That is going to be very, very tight. There's been a crap load of talk about him being traded, which I don't know. You'd have to trade him for a package for depth of young players and tough guy to lose, really tough guy to lose there. Um, And then the other thing you could do is just trade Miller and and sign Besser, give the money to Besser. I think that's the best thing to do. Might have been what they were thinking when they picked up Connor Garland too. They also got Nils Hoglander coming up. 
Uh, JT Miller doesn't have a no trade clause. So I think that's more likely. And that was the other one that we saw them trading. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Jan Mark and Smith are both free agents. Um, possibly let both of them go. Uh, I, I don't see Vegas not being in the playoff picture in that weak division that they're in next year. Um, they are going to have to sign some free agents and stuff like that. Uh, Pacioretty's coming up. But they may just let him walk or they may try to sign him up. He's 30 years old, depending on how much he wants. It's Matthias Yamark has always been good for signing reasonable contracts. He signed a long-term contract with Nashville for $2 million a year, which was he actually sold himself short. Is he going to keep on doing that? I don't know. Morgan Riley on the open market could probably get six, six and a half. Is he going to, if, is, if he's willing to stay at that $5 million price point, they may think it's worth it just to keep him, or they may let him go and uh, sign somebody else, but they probably won't get anything for him because I doubt they'll trade him at the deadline. But it's possible, I suppose. Washington Capitals um, and Schultz, Kempney, Dowd, Eller, Kuznetsov has been talked. I don't know. Are they ever going to solve that Kuznetsov issue? $7.8 million? Is he just going to come back and hopefully be a good boy? Looks like that. Looks like it's heading that direction. Uh, but um, Schultz is going to be a free agent. I think Washington could be out of the playoffs this year. They really need picks to keep on getting younger and younger with this lineup. So um, I can't see them. I could see them trading Schultz. We could see them trading Kempney, Dowd, uh, Eller possibly, and then, of course, Kuznetsov. Uh, but for the most part, uh, also, there was talk about Oshi. I think they'll just keep Oshi there. I really do. At five million, he doesn't seem to be slowing down, and uh, I think they'll just keep the core and try to build, try to get lucky on some young guys, and hopefully win one, one more cup with these guys. But um, I doubt that'll happen. I think this is just going to be your barely get in at team for the next four or five years, barely get into playoffs, get a middle of the round draft pick, and repeat. Rinse and repeat. The Jets, um, their lineup is pretty much set the way they wanted to for the year. I don't think you're going to see them trading anybody unless something really crappy happens in this defense that they put together. It doesn't work out well. Hollabuck has a bad year and they're right out of it. The only one possible is Cop, but I think that they will resign him. I really do. He likes it in Winnipeg. Um, I think they'll find a way to resign him. So I don't think there's anybody in uh, Winnipeg that's going to be going by the wayside. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's all I have to give today. Tell me what you think about the people that we were going to trade, what you would do to trade them, and come on the live. Come on my live stream. We can do more of this fine frolic. We're doing trade proposals now. So you give me your trade proposals. I'll put them out there, and we'll talk about them in a video just like this. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Bye.